Okay, so what I have here is something very special. Um, so what you have is we've got a 200 ohm load, which will simulate the impedance, the uh, antenna input impedance, between 100 and 200 ohms for a square wave for wave loop. Um, and that is uh, fed into a 4 to 1 uh, balance, balanced unbalanced impedance matching transformer. And what I'm expecting to, uh, to see across the frequency range is a reduction in uh, its uh, real um, part of the impedance, a, uh, a resistive reduction of 4 to 1. So that should change from 200 to uh, 50 ohms. And I'm hoping that that's going to uh, be uniform across the entire frequency range. I'm also going to hope that the... Um, that any reactance uh, is going to be zero. Um, now resistors at high frequency do ex exhibit some uh, capacitive reactance, and that's just a phenomena. And I have measured uh, the um, the impedance across uh, a wide frequency range uh, directly. So hopefully, when I turn the nano vector network analyzer on, uh, we're going to be able to see some uh, some good results. So let's go ahead and uh, and switch this on, and let's see what we get. Okay, so you can see that. So uh, what we have in the yellow line over here, so if I just um, if I just get the scale up over here, so we've got, I don't know if you can see that, okay. Um, so we've got uh, a, a, a S11 uh, resistive arm at uh, 50 uh, ohm intervals. Uh, each vertical division is, represents 50 ohms, as you can see, 50, 100, 150, all the way to 400. Um, and that's the yellow line. So what we can see immediately is uh, a fantastic result uh, because uh, we can see that it is uh, approximately 50 ohms from 1 megahertz all the way to 50 megahertz. Now, the important thing to remember is that this uh, design is really only intended between 10 to 30 meters or uh, sorry, 30 to 10 meters or 10 to 30 megahertz, uh, the intended frequency of operation. Um, however, uh, it seems to be really good across the whole range. There is a slight dip um, over here. So if we just drag the marker over here, uh, we can start to see where that starts to tail off, which is approximately um, approximately at 9.3 megahertz. So um, at uh, 10.125, which is the center frequency of the first band of operation, um, that should be a, a really, really fantastic match. Um, and that's going to go all the way to uh, 30 megahertz, which is over here, um, but perfectly usable all the way up to 50 megahertz, the uh, six meter band, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, another thing that we can notice as well, going from the beginning, is uh, if we look at the reactants, if we bring up the, re the reactant scale, um, we can see over here um, that it's pretty much inductively neutral across the entire spectrum, which is amazing, even at one megahertz, which is which looks absolutely great. Um, now, obviously, the scale here is actually 100, so um, uh, it, it actually is a little bit more profound than that. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that scale now. Um, so uh, let's go and change that scale to... Uh, uh, 50, which was the same as for uh, the resistance. So we can see that dip is actually um, is um, that that high, that positive dip is actually a little bit pronounced actually over here. Um, now again, this is at one megahertz. So if we uh, just crank that up um, uh, and remember the resistive match was occurring at 9.3. Um, so over here we've only got 15 uh, ohms of inductive reactance. Um, and to see how those two things actually play out and see how the, the vector of those two um, components of impedance are going are to really uh, affect the match, we've got a uh, Smith representation over here. So as you can see, as I drag those, um, those markers um, from 1 megahertz all the way up to about 9.3, we get this arc um, of motion, this motion arc um, occurring on the Smith. So over here, um, we can expect a reasonably poor match right at one megahertz because, again, uh, the resistance is really um, going to zero over here. But again, at 9.3, very, very, very quickly, we can see see how quickly that, that arc moves in a very short space of time um, all the way up to here. And then the remainder of that arc is very, very close to the 50 ohm, 50 ohm plus zero J 
center. So uh, so that's absolutely fantastic. So if I just drag, uh, we see that marker going from so from here all the way to here, um, the um, the vector change is extremely small on the Smith representation. Um, which is uh, which is absolutely beautiful, which is exactly what we want, um, and that's uh, tending towards some kind of a circular disk um, at 50 ohms, which is brilliant. Um, so that was just something that I wanted to um, show um, uh, as a demonstration of how I can directly see the um, the effectiveness of this balloon, which to me from this looks absolutely amazing uh, far better than what I expected it to perform at. Uh, remember this was only really designed and even the ferrite core over here um, it's a toroid uh, dust iron core uh, it's only really designed to work um, uh, of about upwards of 10 megahertz so it, it's 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 that way which actually matches this very very well um, because as we can see as you go down from about 9.8 9.7 um, the resistive arm seems to tail off and the um and and we have some significant um inductive reactants occurring as well now obviously one very important consideration is how this actually aff uh, affects the return loss so what we would expect um is that after 9.8 9.3 uh, megahertz as the uh, inductive reactance tends to zero um, and the um, resistive match tends to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line of 50 ohms, um, we get this um, the uh, this net uh, vector, uh, uh, which is almost at the, um, the, the 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 perfect 50 plus zero J point on the on the Smith chart. So we would expect a very low um, dip on the return loss um, around about over here um, and um, and maybe some some uh, some negative uh, components over here okay so uh, if we uh, want to bring up um, another trace um, trace three uh, let's go and uh, turn on uh, the log mag so that's going to be the log magnitude of the s1 on parameter uh, which is effectively the return loss. Um, so we can see over here um, in the purple line, we've now got another marker, and we can see over here in the uh, uh, the scale over here what the um, what the uh, what the S one one return loss is actually going to be. So at one megahertz, we, you know we've got zero, which is uh, which is what we expect. Really, really bad. Um, so uh, really unusable at one megahertz. Okay, um, but as we um, calm down. Um, and we get an indication over here and we got look at that minus 15.8 decibels um, and that's at 8.84 megahertz so that is really really usable that is a really fantastic result um, and then um, we can see it tends towards minus 20 decibels um, by um, by 20 megahertz okay we really we really want to use this at about no, about 10 10.125 um, so we can see we're getting a minus almost negative 17 decibels of, of return loss over here, which is fantastic. And that just increases um, all the way down to minus 21, which is absolutely fantastic. It tails up a little bit, but again, perfectly usable all the way up to 50 megahertz, which is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, demonstration of how um, I'm just uh, testing my um, uh, first stage of the uh, impedance matching network for my full wave uh, loop for 10 to 30 uh, meters.